Hey guys, Sean T. Phillips here with my brand new DVD Blu-ray Tuesday Shopping today. They're going to go out to your things together today, see what things are on sale. I know, you know, since it's the first Tuesday of the month, Walmart always changes out the actual section itself, and they usually put in a whole bunch of different, you know, indie horror titles and smaller releases and stuff like that. So definitely look forward to seeing, you know, what they put out in there today. And I heard something about there were supposed to be some, like, things that I think were, like, Walmart exclusive Blu-rays and stuff. So I can't find too much else about that now, so I don't know for sure if those are coming out today or not. I also want to let you guys know that last night I filmed a parody and I want to be, you know, give a big thanks to, to my brother because he actually shot the whole thing for the movie It and it's like really ridiculous. I'm dressed as Pennywise. Here's a little still you know, from it um, but it's going to be going up um, you know, Friday morning really early because I'm seeing the, you know, the screening of it you know, Thursday night at 10 and then the review is going to be going up right after. So definitely be sure to check that out. I feel like it turned out to be really, really ridiculous and I, I can't wait to hear what you guys think of it. And like, if you guys don't want to see the actual review part until you see the movie, you can you know, shut that off. You know, shut off the uh, spoof right after it ends before the review starts, so you won't see anything. And I'll make sure too, there's no spoilers or anything with the review. And also too, make sure you have like alerts turned on. You can like click that bell thing on my subscriptions, so then if I put up a video at like kind of weird times like that, you guys don't miss it. I also let you guys know, I'm going to put a link below. The trailer is now out for the movie Dead Ant, the movie which stars um, Jake Busey's in that movie. Um as well as, um, uh, you know, uh, Tom Arnold is in the film, as well as, you know, as uh, Sean Astin. It's a really cool, like, crazy killer ant movie, and I have an appearance in the movie as well, and you can see me in the trailer for the film as well. So I'm going to put a link below for that as well. Also, at the end of this video, I'm going to have some new DVD and Blu-ray reviews for some things I received to review and talk about. So definitely stay tuned for those, you know, at the end of this video. But anyway, though, guys, let's get going and see what we can find today. Into Target we go. And when it comes to like the review parodies, there's those things that I really, really love to do for movies, but it's like I only like to do them when I really feel like I have like a really solid idea and a lot of stuff that I can really, you know, build like an interesting spoof on. Like I said though, with this It one, I it was one of those things that I had wanted to do this parody ever since I knew they were doing like this big, you know, remake for it, you know, theatrical remake of the story. And like I knew since then, like I had to do this. It was one I really wanted to do. So like I said, I'm so excited though to see, you know, and hear what you guys uh, think of that one. I am leaving till a little early today, so I'm kind of worried that Target and stuff is not going to have the stuff put out yet, so I'm really keeping my fingers crossed that all the things are, you know, put out in the shelves and I don't have to go to a bunch of locations today. But it looks like in here, for the most part, things are put out. I think there's a couple things down here that weren't put out. Like, it doesn't look like they put out the Blu-ray of Rough Night. And I saw this one in theaters. To be honest, though, this was okay. It was sort of, kind of had the feel of, like, very bad things. I didn't absolutely love this one. But it still was a kind of funny movie. It's one of those things, though, that Scarlett Johansson, to me, sort of felt, like, out of place in this one. Because it didn't just seem like the kind of movie that she would do. And then the other ones that came out today, you know, was the Tupac biopic film, you know, all eyes on me so I reviewed this one in my video last week or yeah I think it was in last week or the um, up to, I believe it was last week but I actually did like this one it sort of had like the feel of like an R-rated lifetime film and the other one that came out today was this one uh, first kill with Hayden Christensen and you know Bruce Willis and um, these two ones as I have not seen if you guys have seen these ones let me know if these ones are worth getting this one called Lowriders which the trailer for this one looked kind of interesting and the other one was this one um, Megan Levy another one that I don't know too much about but if you guys have seen either of those two ones though let me know though how you know these ones are and today TV show wise though I know this one released today Supernatural the complete 12th season that one released and I don't know if this was this week this billion season two and um and i can't for, for certain if gotham was today as well I, it, it might have been this is one of the interesting thing they have here as well i have only seen this now uh for nine dollars they have this exclusively limited edition one at target with evil dead and evil dead 2 if you guys don't have these ones though that's definitely a cool set though to have both of them together on you know a set like that other than that though that seems to be the main stuff in here that they got and over here though i wanted to see if it looks like the halloween stuff has come out in here yet but no it doesn't look like they put that stuff out yet it seems like the candy has been all put out the halloween candy i think they're starting to put that out but other than that though none of the halloween you know costumes or stuff yet into walmart we go
but I'm really keeping my fingers crossed that you know they put the stuff out because there's this one harm that was supposed to come out today called raw and I don't know if they're gonna be carrying this one here or not and like I said I'm hopefully they put the stuff out on the shelf because it is a little earlier but they were supposed to be like I like I thought like exclusive blu-rays of like for rich or poor and Fred Fletch lives and I think they were supposed to be Walmart ones but I'm not 100% certain I can't find anything else about them online so we'll see if they've got them but over here today though, like I said, you know, they have Rough Night and they have, you know, a 4K edition of that as well for $27.96. And then they have All Eyes on Me in here. And like I said, uh, Megan Levy. And let me know how this one is. And they have uh, Supernatural here, uh, Low Riders. But I did take a peek in the section. They did put out some of the stuff. This one came out today, this one. I think this is a sequel, Robert and the Toy Maker. I don't know a lot about this, but I remember there was like a movie with the same cover and that same character. There was some like doll movie, I think, like killer doll movie, I believe. But over here though, like I said, they always change out this section the first Tuesday of every month. And this is one they have in here, this uh, Queen of the Desert, which is a, you know, Shot Factory title. Which I think this one, you know, it's a, a new Warner Herzog film. Another one, I don't know a lot about it. If you guys have seen that one, let me know. This one was today, this um, Guardians was a Shot Factory release as well here. But the one of the ones that I wanted to get today um, was this one. It's a little expensive though. I don't know why it's $17.96. That seems like really high for just a regular DVD. But this movie called Raw. In the U.S. though, they didn't release this one on... Um, Blu-ray, it's only on DVD, but so I do kind of want to see this. I've heard, like, for the most part, some really good things about it. I'm probably going to get it, even though it's a little high. Uh, one of the other things that came out today, and they don't have the Blu-ray of this. I think they get, they're going to have it at um, Best Buy, the Blu-ray. This movie called Security with Antonio Banderas and Ben Kingsley. It's all set, like, in a mall. I think it was shot in, like, Bulgaria. But I, for some reason, I always love movies with a mall setting. So for, I think I'm going to get this one if they have it at, um, you know, at Best Buy. So hopefully they have the Blu-ray. Other than that, though, some of the other ones that released today was this movie called uh, The Slider. Uh, this one came out today. Uh, this one movie called Hush Money. All these ones, I don't know a whole lot about these ones. Um, Age of Kill, I believe this one came out today. Um, this one called Monkey King. Uh, the Shadow Man, that one released today. Another one I don't know a lot about. They made a lot of different movies about like the Shadow Man character. This one might be kind of interesting. This one though is only $9.96. Like I said, I don't know why that's so high. That just seems really high. Uh, Beyond the Track was today as well. But those seem to be all the major releases in here that came out. Oh yeah, and then this one. Another one called uh, Serpent, which is some kind of like a, a snake, kind of like killer snake movie, I guess. I don't know. I have to read what these ones are though. Yeah, so in there I ended up buying that Raw movie and the Serpent, which, you know, that was only $9. Sounded actually kind of interesting, like a couple trapped in this tent with a snake and stuff. You know, like I said, the Raw, that was like $17.99. That just seems a little high. I don't, I've never really seen them charge that much just for a standard DVD in there. It's usually like $9 or like $12.99, $13, but it's just strange it was so much money. But on Amazon, it's like $19.99, so it's actually more money online anyway. So it's actually the cheapest way to get it. It's too bad, though, there's no Blu-ray release of this one, but I've heard so much good stuff about it, so hopefully, though, it's an okay one. And this past weekend, I saw two different films. Uh, the first one I saw, it was one that, you know, I had seen the poster for it, and I, I saw some posts, you know, it's one of those ones you have got to see, but I didn't know too much about it. And I feel like the trailer doesn't really do the movie justice. It kind of makes it look like it's much more of a goofy film than it is. And it's a movie called Patty Cakes, and it's about this girl who lives with her grandmother and her, and her mother, and her mother is like a real alcoholic, and her grandmother is real sick. And it's kind of about her trying to be and be successful as a rapper and she's kind of getting made fun of you know by the people around where she lives because of her weight and it's kind of her going through all the kind of problems in her town and trying to be successful and, you know her mother you know was a failed musician herself you know in the past and so she's always giving her daughter crap about it like you know about why she's doing this and you know saying you're never going to get anywhere and it's kind of just her trying to be successful and be successful at being a rapper I don't know I just I found the movie to be amazing it's definitely one of my favorite 
favorite films this year, next to Good Time, which is another one, which is like definitely like my top favorite so far of 2017. Uh, the other one that I saw uh, this past weekend was uh, a movie that was like has been filmed since like 2014 and has had all these delays. A movie called Tulip Fever, and it's gotten really really negative reviews. And yes, it's like it's a, you know it's a period piece and it's about a, a thing that you never really heard too much about, which was like. Sell, you know, I think I, I can't remember what year it took place, but when they were using like tulips as currency and they were like trading tulips, and it's about you know, Elisa Vicanther's character, uh, you know, and she gets married to uh, Christoph Waltz, kind of like this arranged marriage. He basically, when she's like 18, he ends up basically buying her from the orphanage and then like getting married to her, trying to you know, because he wants to have a child with her, and it's like this arranged marriage. And he ends up commissioning this painting by a you know, an artist you know, played by Dane Dehan. It's kind of of about uh, Dane Dehan, Elizabeth Canther's character, kind of falling in love and having this secret romance, and all set to the whole thing about t trading tulips and I don't know. And there, there was some really weird stuff with Christoph Waltz's character talking about like his little general and like some sort of odd stuff. You know, like I said, the movie's got like a really negative review. It's got like a 10% on Rotten Tomatoes. But to be 100% honest, and I know some people say like I like a lot of stuff and. I kind of did like it to be honest like I liked it for what it was and I like some of the sometimes I really do like these kind of period piece movies and I really did kind of get into it and I know it's not great I know it was some of it was kind of silly and like you could tell it was one of those movies that was kind of recut because it was only about an hour and 47 minutes and that kind of film would normally be like three hours I mean no two and a half hours or so so you could tell it kind of had like a cut down sort of feel but if you guys saw either of those movies though let me know what you thought of them in the comments below you know and what movies you guys saw this past weekend as well. Into Best Buy we go. And when I was in uh, Walmart, I totally forgot to like mention like I wasn't seeing those you know exclusive ones in there like that for richer or poorer one or Fletch Lives and I don't know what happened to those exclusives that they like were like a rumor they got canceled and then something somebody said something about them being a Amazon exclusives but then they're not on Amazon anymore. So if you guys know anything about those ones, let me know if you did end up seeing them in a Walmart either. And in there, you know, they have low riders as well. It's $19.99 for that. But this is the one, though, that I did want to get, uh, you know, for $14.99. That's like I was saying with that raw, raw one being, you know, so much money just for a regular DVD. It's so weird because this is a Universal title as well, and this is so much cheaper. But this sounded like kind of a fun movie. It was all set, like I said, inside of a mall. And I always love those kind of mall setting movies. It's probably going to be on Netflix soon or, like, probably might already be on there. But for some reason, though, I really do, like, you know, anything that's set in malls that's probably like one of my all-time favorite settings so like I don't know I definitely think I'm gonna get this one and they actually still have one of the steelbooks in here the Lion King steelbook so that's pretty funny that they still have one of these ones left in here uh, and like I said I think I showed this one in Walmart this one I believe released today this one the master as well as um, Iron Protector but I'll look over in the section see if there's anything different but these are all the main things today and over here, though, they have this thing that came out today, this Kingsman one, uh, the Secret Service Premium Edition, the 4K one for $29.99, and then the regular Blu-ray for $21.99. And I think these are like, um, there's like some kind of a booklet in here and some kind of like postcards or something in this one, because this one had already been released on, you know, 4K as well. I never really like these like super plain kind of cover. It's supposed to be kind of like a book or something. I don't know. It's, it's I guess it's interesting, but I never love like really, really plain kind of covers like that um, I don't know if this was this week I think this was like a week or two back I know the um, these ones came out today on 4k uh, cabin in the woods which is actually a really good price for that uh, $17.99 for a 4k release and then red and red 2 the first red is only uh, uh, $14.99 here for the 4k and part 2 is $17.99 as well on 4k but other than that though over here it seems to be all the main stuff, and they have Rough Night as well, and their 4K is $27.99. Yeah, so I did end up getting that security one in there. Like I said, I always just love, you know, mall setting type films. But, you know, I actually did find some pretty cool stuff out today. Still, though, that price of though, that raw, though, I don't know, that was pretty high. But the thing is, it's still cheaper than it was on Amazon. And that those kind of ones that are, like, you know, more smaller releases and stuff never really go down too much in price. But anyway, though, guys, like I always say, if you guys enjoy these, you know, shopping videos, definitely give this video a thumbs up. And I also, like I said, too, be sure to check out, you know, early Friday morning. Morning, my it review so excited to hear what you guys think of that one you know it parody review i can't wait to hear your thoughts on that one and everything now though stay tuned for a couple new dvd and blu-ray reviews 
And the first one I got here from Universal is the Mummy reboot, uh, reboot remake, and starring Tom Cruise. This movie got a lot of really mixed opinions with it. But to be honest, you know, I saw this one in theaters. I actually really did like this movie. To be totally honest, I really like. To me, though, what really made this movie was the actress that plays the Mummy. I feel like the Mummy character in here that was the strongest aspect of this movie, and I really like the actress that plays the Mummy. She was really good in the Kingsman movie and Atomic Blonde. You know, really look forward to seeing the stuff she does in the future. The plot of this is kind of hard to explain a little bit because it kind of has a whole lot of different directions to this one because it's got like the Jekyll and Hyde character in here. It's got all these different things. So it's, the movie is setting up the uh, universe that, you know, Universal is doing. I guess, I think it's called like the Dark Cinematic Universe or something like that. And it's going to have like a bunch of different like, um, you know, new monster films, like reboots of some of the, the classic monster films. And they're going to be doing like Creature from the Black Lagoon. Um, I think that... I don't know, I know there's like a bunch of different ones, and even in this movie they kind of show in one scene things that are like kind of hinting to what some of the movies are. But this is essentially though, the mummy is this princess whose heart was stolen from her and she was, you know, locked in a tomb and with a curse put on her. And these treasure hunters end up finding her body, you know, the sarcophagus, and end up, you know, taking it out. And they're trying to find something else as well, these, like, missing stone things. And, like like I said, it's kind of hard to explain. It has a whole bunch of different aspects to it. But Tom Cruise is essentially on the airplane when they're transporting her body and, you know, the sarcophagus. And he they ends up going down and everyone on the plane ends up dying. But he ends up living because of, like, this cursed, you know, mummy who's on there. And he comes back to life. And because of her, and it's kind of like he sort of has to do her bidding and he's kind of con interconnected to her because of this because she you know with the curse brought him back to life to try and help you know he needs to sort of help her to kind of break the whole curse that's essentially what the whole movie was like I said the biggest thing to me that really makes this movie is the mummy character I actually thought this was a pretty fun movie it has on here uh, feature wise a bunch of different featurettes on the movie it has a thing on here about creating the uh, the uh, plane crash scene here uh, as well as um, deleted and extended scenes a commentary track on this one so tons of different features on this one the next one here here from Lionsgate is It Comes at Night. And I thought this was actually a pretty interesting movie. It's totally, though, um, I think it's like, was kind of advertised as like a real horror movie, like a super horror, like super scary movie. It's a very creepy movie. It's a very atmospheric movie. It's totally a real slow burn type film, though. It's about Joe Egerton and his wife. And it's basically, though, um, you know, he ends up, you know, and his and his and his and his son, and they're kind of living out there, out in the middle of the woods, and you know something bad has happened because they're out there, like. Um, kind of having to be really careful when they go outside they're care they're, they know that there's some sort of a virus or some sort of sickness something that had happened outside so him and his family are in there trying to survive and kind of like sort of stay away from people and like they have only a small amount of food in there to eat and they can kind of go outside at certain times to try and hunt and it's sort of like um you know something had happened. It's not one of these movies where it like spoon feeds everything to you. You kind of have to make assumptions for exactly what had happened. But what happens though is one day when Joe Egerton's character goes out, he ends up coming across this family and he reluctantly, you know, brings them back to the house. And um, it's essentially though, it's essentially it's just bringing this family back to the house. And the one son, Joe Egerton's son, is having these weird like really creepy dreams at night and um you know that it might not have been a good idea bringing you know this family back and um it's they they have all these kind of rituals in the house that they do like you know shut the door and put like this plastic stuff underneath of it and all, all these really specific ways that they do things and things kind of get changed around a little bit when this family comes to stay with them at the house and that's essentially all you can say is it's a very slow burn movie leading up to some things i thought it was actually relatively interesting it's not like i said as much of a horror movie but just more of like a thriller creepy vibe movie here it has on here though a feature on here as well as a commentary track on here uh, with the director on this one this one here, I really like this movie. Um, and this is from the same director who directed the movie Chuck and Buck and uh, a bunch of different movies. But it's the same, you know, writer. The writer was Mike White, who wrote Chuck and Buck and starred in that film. And uh, the same, and then the director of this one is the person who directed Chuck and Buck, which I feel like that's probably one of my top like twenty movies. It's an amazing movie, and all of the movies that Mike White writes, except except for some of like the real comedy type ones like School of Rock, they always have kind of weird 
weird undertones and a weird sort of dark vibe to them. And this movie is called Be Beatrice at Dinner. And it's basically about Selma Hayek's character playing a really, really different role for her. I thought she was amazing in this. Totally different than I had seen her in anything else before. Real serious and kind of a sad character. And it's basically, though, she's sort of a massage therapist, holistic medicine woman who goes to this her one of her clients houses before she's you know just to kind of give her a, basically she just does massages and she kind of talks to her about holistic stuff and she took care of uh, Selma Hayek's character took care of the her client's daughter who was sick you know going through like treatments of cancer and stuff like that so they kind of bonded from that they sort of became friends and she ends up going over there though for these treatments to give her the massage and that night the client's like well you know I have a huge dinner coming up th this evening and it's for my husband and it's a big job thing because he's got this uh, his boss is you know played by um, John Lithgow and they're playing this really big merger that they're doing with these hotels and stuff but of course though what ends up happening though is Selma Hayek's car right when she's getting ready to leave because she's got to get out of there before this party starts breaks down and they end up letting her stay for dinner the husband is like oh okay and and it, and basically though Selma Hayek is like really out of place here these are like really uppity rich friends that are there Chloe Savigny's characters in there uh, Jay Duplass and she's kind of like um sort of saying things too that is kind of bothering people and like asking sort of questions about stuff and it becomes very very awkward and she gets like um convinced too that John Lithgow had um had something to do with what messed up things with her family when she was a kid and it's kind of like her like skying and looking at him really dirty a lot of the movie and John Lithgow plays this business guy who is kind of like will do anything for money and doesn't really care about anything else but what if you know what will you know profit for him he plays He's like a good kind of bad guy in this movie, like a real, you know, shystery kind of fella. I don't know. I li really like this movie. It's a very, very gloom and doom movie, though, but really, really well done. Definitely a very different role uh, for Selma Hayek. The next one here from Lionsgate as well is a new Steven Seagal film called Cartels. And this is basically, though, about Steven uh, Seagal's character. And he works for, I think it's like... Um, I can't remember what it's if it was the CIA or something like that. Um, but he basically ends up arresting this um, this drug cartel guy, and um, you know, he goes in there to bust him. But he ends up, you know, the guy that he arrests ends up faking his own death. Because he like everyone thinks that he was killed, but the whole plan was to get this guy and take him back to this hotel and kind of like um, get him to safety so he can testify against the bad things that his one client had done that he was working for had done all this like really bad stuff but of course though somebody tips off you know somebody at the you know organization that uh, Steve uh, Steven Seagal's character you know works for tips somebody on and of course why they're at this hotel getting ready to try and transport the guy the bad guys start to kind of come to this hotel and it's kind of them all in there kind of trapped with all these people coming after them and trying to kill them trying to kill the guy so he can't testify that's essentially what it is if you guys know Steven Seagal movies they're all like kind of crazy over the top action and this one definitely has in one scene like two he's like shooting like a flame flower flamethrower in this so there's some real crazy like you know steven seagal action in this movie definitely just a fun over the top type film here uh, the next one here from well go usa and this is the dvd version of the phantasm set the blu-ray version which i review when that first came out that's like long out of print now so that's like a really really hard one to get but they've released now a dvd set of all the phantasm films together really cool cover I love the tall man reflecting in the sphere here but this is all um, five of the um Phantasm films together here in one set on DVD. It's a really good price too for all these together if you guys don't have, you know, the other set. But I'll show you guys a look inside. The discs in here are stacked like this and it's, you know, the DVD versions because when these were released before, it was only the Blu-ray set. If you guys don't know the Phantasm films, though, it's basically, though, about, like, the tall man character. And, like, there's some really weird, heinous stuff going on at the cemetery. And they're doing weird things to the bodies and stuff. And the one kid kind of discovers stuff with his brother. And it's kind of like him and their friend, played by Reggie Bannister, trying to stop the tall man. And the tall man is, like, kind of following them through all the movies. And they, it's like, they have all kind of crazy stuff happening in these films, like time warps and all these kind of crazy, insane stuff. But are super, super fun movies. 
They have features on these ones as well on these releases here. But just want to let you guys know that this one is available if you guys did not get the, a chance to get the Blu-ray version of the set. And this one, like I said, is from Welga USA. The next one I got here from Twilight Time is a limited edition. This is a limited to 3,000 copies edition here of the Joe Pesci film Eight Heads in a Duffel Bag. I've always really loved this movie. I had not seen this movie though in such a long time and I forgot how funny and ridiculous this movie is. And like I really love like Joe Pesci comedy movies like this, The Super, uh, Gone Fishing, which I know wasn't a great movie, but I, I don't know. I just loved like him in these comedy roles and of course, you know, in the Home Alone films. This is basically is Joe Pesci is a mobster who has the job though of um, there was a hit putting out on all these like eight different people and their heads were cut off and put in this bag and Joe Pesci has to take these heads, fly with them and to deliver them to a fellow mobster who paid this $80,000 hit on them. So he has this bag full of heads and it's kind of him having all these problems with these heads because like he's on the airplane, he doesn't know, he, he can't fit them anywhere, he has to put them in this, into underneath of the plane and then when he goes out to get them though, it turns out he mixes up the two bags and the guy he was sitting next to on the plane who's re getting ready to, to fly to San Diego to go on a trip to Mexico to, with, to meet up with his fiance and his family, you know, and her family, then like, you know, he ends up getting the bags instead. So it's a whole problem about that guy getting his Joe Pesci's bag and having these heads in the bag and having no idea what has happened and why he has these heads. You know, his fiance's mother discovering the heads in the bag and all these kind of like situations where like, what are they going to do with these heads? Where are they going to hide them? Whose heads are they? And then Joe Pesci's character is, is going and tracking down the person's bag that, that he has and going to the school where the guy is, trying to talk to David Spade's character who's one of his friends trying to get information where he is and he's like beating him with towels and it's all these wacky ridiculous like encounters that are going on like crazy over the top stuff like I said this is just like I really like these funny over the top ridiculous type movies there isn't too much of these kind of movies anymore like this style movie especially with somebody like as high caliber too as Joe Pesci in them you don't see this kind of stuff too often but to me I don't know I just I love this movie I forgot how fun this movie is definitely check this movie out like I just I love this movie like i said i was really happy to see this one again uh the next one here one that you guys know is available from hbo and this is a movie starring oprah winfrey and rose brine and this is a true story and it was based on a book that the the one's uh, daughter wrote it's called the immoral life of henrietta or locks this is basically about um i think it was like set in the 30s or 60s I, and it was about a woman who um, when they basically discovered the first cancer cell that would continue to you know during a biopsy that would continue to grow and about how this one woman's uh, cells still to this day are used and how they're able to like uh, find cures and stuff like that from this tissue that they found that continues to grow on and on and on continuously. And it's about Rose Bryan's character who's writing a story about the, the woman. So she ends up going to um, see Oprah Winfrey, who's the daughter of this woman. And, and you know, there's not too much information out there about her. So she wants to meet with Oprah Winfrey's character, try and talk to her about her mother to write this story. But an interesting, you know, character piece here about something that I had never heard of before, though. Uh, the next ones here are from Gravitas Ventures, and I'll. Put a link where you guys can pick these ones up. This movie, though, this I really thought this was a pretty cool horror movie, and it, it was actually too one of the first ones of these type of movies, like haunted house type movies, that actually had an in, in like a a twist to it and an original feel to this that wasn't the same old same old like haunted house movie and it was really nice that it was something really different it's a movie called the atoning and this is basically um about and i can't say too much about this movie because i don't want to ruin much you find like you know 45 minutes into the movie about something but it's basically though about this family this um husband and wife and their son living in this house and um you know it's like an interesting thing because like uh the kid there it's like they're all really in this house the whole time and the husband and wife are like really like not getting along they don't sleep in the same bed they like they're really like something is up with them and the son like is like well isn't it time for me to go into we go into school and what's going on and and, and but then like of course what's happening though is they start like witnessing things in the house like things in the house start to move they start kind of hearing things they start seeing things and it becomes like this haunted house thing about them trying to figure out exactly what is this and what is going on and the people are kind of there like screaming at them there's some really creepy stuff especially like the end of this movie it's this one hand character the hand here 
some very creepy things in this movie. I actually found this to be extremely creepy and extremely effective because, like I said, I can't say too much about this movie without ruining things, but it was definitely a twist on things. And I could say one movie and it would ruin what it is, so I'm not. But definitely was very cool. Definitely check that one out. I believe that movie is going to be in um, Redbox as well. Uh, the next one here is a movie called um, Among Us. This is about a couple... Um, and then I ended up having like an accident in the beginning of the movie because something had happened to the one, um, their son ended up dying and the mother was like in the, in the car with the husband and they, she, she was kind of going crazy and lost her mind for a second and like, like drove the car, got into the terrible accident and the husband was ended up paralyzed in a wheelchair and they end up moving out into the middle of the woods and they continue you know, in the cabin in the woods and they continuously are like moving around, going to different locations and they're not really having like a whole lot of like... Um, you know, luck anywhere because they're very depressed and like he's sort of upset with her and he's like, you know, you're only around because you feel guilty about what you did to me. So they've got a really bad relationship and really estranged and it's really like toxic what's going on between them. But of course, though, there's some sort of an entity around them too that is following them around and like, is it the sun? What is it? And it's like a very creepy vibe thing about them kind of trying to figure out exactly, you know, what is going on and how to kind of like be happy again again too and deal with you know what is going on that's essentially what this one is but has on here though deleted scenes and trailer on this one the next one here um is one called three hours till dead and this is a zombie movie it's about a group of these friends going they were going to like a um uh going out to like go camping and they end up like unknowingly or going out and then like they're kind of cut off from like you know the signal and everything so they, they don't know what's happening outside but they end up finding out that there was like a zombie outbreak why they were doing all this driving because they're going out kind of in the middle of nowhere so it's kind of them and these friends uh trapped out uh broken down in the middle of nowhere and they're sort of trying to like deal with these zombies everywhere and the zombies are kind of coming after them and it's kind of them like hiding out into this house and and like, what are they going to do? And how are they going to fight off these zombies? And, like, um... Because the one guy ends up getting bitten and then he dies, and that it's sort of it's sort of like a it's sort of a Night of the Living Dead sort of vibe type movie here. Uh, I actually thought this was actually pretty fun, like you know, uh, micro budget zombie movie here. This is one I was really interested in seeing as well. This is a movie called Arbor Demon, and this has on here, um, you know, Jake Busey is in this one, as well as Fiona Dorf, uh, you know, uh, Brad Dorf's, you know, daughter, and she's, you know, in the latest Chucky film. She's going to be the new one that's coming out. Really good actress. She's on that show too with Elijah Wood. Um, I can't, I always forget the name of what it was, but this movie is called Arbor Demon, and this is about a, a couple who are going out, uh, you know, on a camping trip. And like the, um, you know, Fiona Durf's character just found out she's pregnant and she's out there kind of saying, oh, you know, what would you do if we, you know, we were pregnant? He's like, oh, that's not going to happen. We don't need to worry about that. She's like, oh, but what if, and he didn't want to, want to deal with it. So it's them kind of out there trying to finally get, her, get away and take a trip and stuff like that. And they're out there though. But of course, though, they kind of like witness, like it's them out there and there's something out there in the woods with them. And they kind of discover, too, these hunters are out there and you see somebody attack, you know, these hunters get attacked by somebody. And a lot of the movie is set inside of a tent. So it's all kind of like in this, like a majority of the movie is set inside of this tent with them, you know, sort of trapped in there with uh, Jake Busey's character. Why there's something outside of there, you know, and they don't know what it is. And it's sort of them trying to figure out exactly what is going on and how they're going to, you know, survive the night but a pretty cool one of those things like all like in one setting for a majority of the movie uh the next one's here from um mondo macabre and this was actually a really pretty interesting movie here this is a movie called spider and i i think this is from russia i believe and it's um it's about this one, um, this guy who was like a painter, and he was commissioned to draw this um, this painting of the Virgin Mary. I believe it was the Virgin Mary for this church. And um, he ends up seeing at the, the church where he's at, this one girl, he's like, oh, I really want her to model for me. She's going to be the person who models for me. And, you know, she's going to be my muse. And, you know, this is this girl... And she ends up saying, because she like the priest says, oh, you know, you should come on and model for this guy. And, you know, this is a good thing for the church and everything. So she ends up going there. And, of course, though, this guy is, like, really kind of sleazy, a little weird. And he's, you know, 
he's kind of painting these nude women and stuff this woman is not really like you know accustomed to and you know has not kind of seen this kind of stuff and it's sort of like almost it's basically like a sexual awakening thing for this girl who is going there to model for this guy and then she kind of there's amazing scenes too of like the paintings that are in the studio where the guy is and like she's like looking at them kind of thinking about them and the paintings are kind of coming to life there's amazing scenes it kind of reminded me too of an afraid of the dark there was a, one of those ones i think with those paintings that people would get trapped in and like the paintings kind of moved and they would basically for these paintings in this movie too they would freeze the actors in like frames to make it look like a painting and then they would be moving real slow and stuff it was very creepy and there's a creepy spider character in this and it's kind of her you know with these fantasies and then kind of things coming to life and kind of out of the paintings after her but a really really trippy movie here really really great Great music on this and has a 4k transfer in this one the movie looks great it's a movie too from 1991 but really really interesting movie here and the next one from modern macabro as well is a movie called the fox with the velvet tail this is a really really early giallo film from 1971 it's basically though about this one woman who ends up leaving her husband for this other man and then she ends up going out to kind of like vacation with him out in this kind of island type area. But like weird things start to happen to them, you know, right when they go out there and it's like the, the brakes in the car get screwed up, things are starting to happen around the house and it's kind of like a mystery of like, is it the old husband that she left? Is he kind of messing around trying to kind of kill them, trying to get revenge? It's that type of thing. And like I said, it's an early giallo. It's like, I think it was like, one of the really, really early ones, I think they're, this was like right when they were kind of starting to really make these films. Like they, I think the girl with Bur Burba the Crystal Plumage was like one of the, like the, one of the very, very first, I think, or one of them, I think. And this was, like I said, this was like very early. And they kind of made these movies, I think, through like these the giallo type films i feel like until like the early 80s but they like occasionally would do other ones but like they were really really big in the 70s especially in the 70s especially in the early 70s this hound has on here a uh, new 4k transfer on this one a commentary track on here uh alternate scenes but a really pretty interesting one here which i had never seen before uh the next one here from wild eye releasing is a movie called bone jangles and this movie features you know reggie banister from you know from the phantasm films in this movie it's essentially, though, a movie about this, like, ultimate serial killer guy that, like, was real screwed up looking. And it's also set in a world, too, where there's kind of, like, um, you know, spells and evil stuff that kind of happen in this world. And um, that's basically about the police. They finally track down this, you know, Bone Jangles character who's killed, like, over a hundred different people. And, like, they've, like, kind of caught him at other times. He's gotten away. And they've, like, they've never really had a whole lot of luck. But they finally end up getting this guy, you know, and, and then they have to kind of transport him. But they end up breaking down the middle of nowhere in this in this town area but in the town though the town is cursed and bad things have always happened in this town and they've always had like supernatural things and creatures and all these kind of things in there throughout the years it was kind of making me think of like Ernest scared stupid a little bit like like with the town there with, with the curse to it I was I don't know sometimes I was thinking of that like with this curse but they kind of you know bone jingles character ends up getting loose going around killing the people in there but also kind of like fighting and killing the things that are cursing the town and stuff just a really fun movie and uh, uh, Reggie Anderson's character plays the character, you know, the character's father, Bone Jenger's father, and he was a serial killer as well, and he's, like, telling him all these crazy things, like, don't get anywhere near women and don't do anything, like, I don't know, was, he was crazy, I, I always really love Reggie Bannister, he just has a fun part in this one. The next one here uh, from Wild Eye Releasing as well is a movie called Alien vs. Zombies. Pretty cool cover on this one. And this is a movie uh, about an alien that comes down from space to kind of like visit Earth. But when he gets there though, he finds out that like something had happened and like there's like zombies on earth and it's kind of like a post-apocalyptic world when he gets there and people are sort of surviving and trying to kind of fight from these zombies and survive and he kind of gets there and it's sort of like him there trying to figure out if there's a way that he can kind of help these people and help kind of defeat these zombies and if he can like exactly what he can do and it's all the kind of survivors out there kind of trying to survive and like living to and banding together and that's essentially what it what what it was was just the whole thing about an alien trying to help these people from zombies is definitely a different kind of idea like it definitely an original thing about you know i had not seen something like this before but it has on here though outtakes a uh, special effects test on here and as well as audition tapes on this this one here from breaking glass pictures this is a movie called the basement this one i really think this is a cool cover on this this is about um, his basement, and it has like a it's a cursed basement, and like something had happened down in it in the beginning of the movie. And you see these people getting killed down there, but it's about a group of friends, and like they're all like um, I think it was in like. 
can't remember where this where this took place, but it was like a they're like international friends that were kind of like at school and stuff like that, and they were all friends for this at this party one night, and the one friend like oh we should do like a seance and stuff, so they kind of mess around with this seance. The one friend ends up, ends up going missing, and he ends up wandering down into the basement area, which has kind of been locked off where the bad things that happened in the past, and somehow they got down there, and the friends all go down there, and of course get themselves trapped down there, and there's something down there like killing them one by one. They're trapped down there, you know, trying to figure out how they're going to get out, how they're going to, you know, you know, live another day pretty much. And that's essentially what it is. It's a pretty cool, creepy, and it's done so, like a lot of, like mixed with found footage because like some of the characters have cameras and stuff on it. But this one has on here behind the scenes as well as deleted scenes and production galleries on this one. And the last one here from the company High Octane Pictures is a movie called America Has Fallen. This is another one that had a pretty interesting concept. This, um... This guy's on a on a you know on the bus and he ends up seeing this girl and he's like I think I've seen you around town and she's like oh yeah you might have um, you should call me sometime and, and you know she gives him his phone her phone number and he's like oh I'm, I'm gonna definitely call it and he you know right away she gets off the you know the bus and he ends up calling it of course though this phone number was linked to uh, because this woman was like with this group of these terrorists that were up to no good and doing bad things they put the bomb in this building inside of a car car so this guy has no idea when he calls this number he ends up blowing up this you know detonating this bomb and of course though you know he keeps trying to call the number thinking why is this girl not picking up i really want to try set up a date with her but of course though you know what he did so then like the cia is coming after him tracks him down to his house and they're all like screaming at him like you know we know what you've done and it doesn't matter what you say you're going to go to jail for the rest of your life and he's like what are you talking about i i, I didn't do anything and it's basically him trying to prove his innocence and he you know ends up getting escaping from the guys that you know have you know arrested him and he goes off on his own trying to find this girl and figure out where she is and try and you know clear his name and also try and stop these people from what they're planning to do and you know because they're planning to do other kind of like terrorist type things as well so that's essentially what it was you know him trying to you know, save everything and clear his name here. This has on here, though, a commentary track on here. It was interesting, too, because I think I saw online, I don't know if it was right, like, the budget for this was, like, $6,000. So it was kind of amazing, too, to see a movie done like this with these kind of effects and, like, this, like, big story to this done for super, super low budget. And I feel like they did a pretty decent job, though, with if that was the budget for that, for the film. But anyway, though, guys, that's all for the review portion of this video. Thanks again for watching and subscribing, and I'll see you guys later.